Welcome to my series on prototyping in Figma. Uh, in this series, I will be covering three different things in three different videos. The first video will go over how to make some basic chart types in Figma. The second video will talk about how to put that into a dashboard mockup. And the third video will go over uh, how to add interactivity to that dashboard mockup. Before starting with the building, I just want to help orient uh, anyone who's new to Figma to what we'll be working with today. So in this leftmost panel, you'll see both layers and assets. Uh, this side is basically for organization. So all of the things that you bring into your canvas space will show up here. Uh, up at the top, this is where you'll be creating things from. This is the only place that you can create new things. And then on the right hand side is where uh, you will be adjusting all of the properties for anything that you're making. So the first thing we're going to be building today is a bar chart. And I'm actually going to show you two ways to build this. Um, and I think they take pretty similar amounts of time. The first one is just by taking um, a rectangle. So over here, uh, I had mentioned earlier, this is where you can make things from. This is your shape tool. It has a number of shapes in it, but it's usually defaulted to the rectangle. So that's the one I'll be using today. Uh, if you click, I believe it just, yeah, it automatically makes a 100 by 100 square. And you can resize that here. Uh, if you would like to, similar to other design applications, but I am going to uh, resize it over in the properties section. So I think um, t about 1200 is good for the width, and I'm going to do a height of 600. Um, and then what I'm going to do now is use a plugin called Split Shape, which I will link in the description. But to access your plugins, you will just right click go to plugins and then split shape is the one that we'll be using uh, so here pops up another window where you can make a number of selections so how many columns you want how many rows the gutter which is how much space is in between the shapes and the margin uh, these are already set to what I would want for this so I'm just going to click split and you'll see that it splits them up um, sometimes you're you might want to mess around with it uh, it might not be exactly what you want the first time. You're just going to have to change the gutter size and, and the number of uh, columns and rows depending on what you need. And then after this, I just go through and just resize some of the bars. Like so. Try to make it look kind of random, which can be one of the harder parts about mocking up charts. There you go. It looks pretty good so far. Uh, next thing we're going to do is add the labels. So one thing I like to do is see how wide each bar is. So this one is 133. And I like to make the text box the same size just because I think it makes alignment a lot simpler. So I'm going to click text again up here where you create items from and just click. Oh. And I'm just going to write J. We're going to pretend these are by month. And I'm just going to change the width of this to 133. Won't really make that big of a difference, but when we go to align it with the bar it represents, uh, you'll see those red lines dot, uh, pop up. Those help you align items on your canvas. So that just tells us um, that it's equally centered. If I press Command D, that'll actually duplicate whatever item I have selected. Uh, so I actually have two J's on top of each other here, and I'm just going to move that over um, to align well with the next one. And then a cool thing uh, that you can do in Figma, if I just keep pressing Command D, it's both duplicating the item and also duplicating the action that I did immediately after, which was slide it over. Uh, it will continuously move it over the same amount that you did the first time, but since the bars are equally spaced, it'll put them all evenly among all the bars we just made and then I just go in quickly and change the labels to the months or the first letter of the months in this case and there you go there is uh, your bar chart so I'm going to show one more way to make this and 
Uh, I'll do one in the other direction. So again, bring up a rectangle. This time we're going to make it the size that we would want just one. So I think the height is pretty good. Maybe we'll change the width to 500 to start. And then, uh, similar to what I showed you if you press Command D, it'll make another one. I can move it until I like the spacing. Uh, and if I keep pressing Command D, it will make more of those bars equally spaced the same way. And I could do sort of what I did before where I just resize them to make it look a little bit more like a bar chart. Um, another thing I uh, would recommend if you're doing a lot of bars, so I'm just going to click Command D again. It duplicated everything that I had selected. I'm just going to move those down. This might be a lot of bars to manually resize. So let's pretend they are all the same size to begin with, 600. You might not want to go through and resize all of them. So what I would do in this case is I just select a couple you press shift, you can select multiple at once, similar to other applications. And I will just change all of these at the same time. So maybe these ones will be 720. Pick another set of random ones. Maybe these ones are 540. And then maybe just a couple more. And make these 630. So that's another way that you can resize the bars instead of doing it manually if you do have quite a few. So this is how you make a bar chart. The next thing I'm going to go through today is how to make a table. Uh, and this is actually going to be pretty similar to the way that we made the bar chart. So I'm going to start off again with a rectangle. Um, I believe I did 1200 by 800 for the one on the left, which looks about right. Though so again, make it whatever size you need for uh, your prototype. I'm going to change the background color. So it defaulted to dark gray, but uh, to change it to white, I go over here, sort of in the property section under fill. So this is the color of that shape. Um, and it actually keeps all the colors in the document. Uh, down here, so I know I can reuse the same exact color uh, that's somewhere else, but I'm just going to pick white for this. And then we're going to go back to using that split shape plugin. So again, right click, plugins, split shape, and then these are the properties that I want for this particular table already, but four columns, eight rows, and eight out of 20. But again, play around with it for what works for you. And when I click split, we can see that. Um, that table layout already coming into shape and so now we're just going to be putting the labels on so again text up here or you could just hit T uh, to make text and I'm going to make the labels at the top first so category and again we want to see those red lines come up to help us uh, align it properly so duplicate And just change these as you go. So first order. Quantity. And sales. Now for the labels for the actual table, you can do one of two things. Um, on the left hand side, you see I actually did uh, just hashtags to represent numbers for some of these, but if you wanted to put real numbers in, uh, you could totally do that as well. But the way we're going to do this is again, just bringing up that text tool. We're going to start here with category. I could have duplicated the category below. Um, and then like I said, I like to make it the same size. So that was 285 and 82.5, just because it makes alignment easier for me. Put that right in the center, press duplicate, put that in the middle of the next one, and then a little trick where we keep doing that all the way down. Now what I'm going to do next is actually group these just so I can duplicate them going uh, horizontally. So shift, select, 
and then I'm going to press Command and G, and that'll group them together. So if you saw on the left hand side, they were previously all the individual ones, and now they are one. So I can press Command D and duplicate this, move it over, align it the way I want to, and then keep going. Right, so we are almost there. Now we just need to change what these say, which is really simple, and we're going to use another plugin called Change Text. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is go into one of these groups and just actually, I can select at the group level, um, right click plugins, and change text. So if these said different things, and I only wanted to change um, maybe some of them to different words, I can type the word that I'm looking to match up here, but since I'm changing all of them, I don't need to do that. So here I will just type um, the number signs that we had, and then update, and it'll change all of those. And so you can just keep doing that to these as well. And then maybe this one, since it's sales, we put the dollar sign in front so that the client knows. And it actually saved ones I've already did, so I could just select here and update. And there you go. We have our table. The next chart we will be covering today is both an area and a line chart, and the way we're going to make them are pretty similar. Uh, first thing we're going to do, or the first thing I like to do, is come up in the shape tools and select a line. This part isn't technically uh, necessary in order to make the line or the area chart, but I find that it helps making sure that the points are distributed evenly. So I will just make a line. Again, Command D, duplicate it spread it out the distance that I think I want the points to be, and then continuously press Command D so I can get a couple of those. And this is just going to create the structure behind our line chart. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, and again, this is just something that I like to do, is group these. So drag, select them all, Command G for group. So now they're one group over here in our layers panel and I'm just going to lock them. And that just means that I can't uh, edit them now and that's because we are going to click over them and I don't want to accidentally move one and mess myself up. So up at the top, I'm going to go to this pen tool and here's where we're going to start making the line chart right on top of here. So again, I said I made these background lines to just give me a framework for where to put uh, the points of the line in the area chart so I know that they're all evenly distributed because if you were to do it without this for example you would just sort of kind of have to guess if these were equally distant and that just seems like more work than it's worth so I'm going to use this sort of as a template and I know I can just click on top of them and they're going to be equally spaced just do it pretty randomly as far as what the height is And if I stopped right here, this would be my line chart. I'm going to keep going just a couple more steps in order to make an area chart. So I'm going to press shift and go all the way down. Shift just makes, um, make sure the line is straight. Pressing shift again to go across and then shift again to connect all of the dots. So now this is all one structure. I'm just going to press done up here. And now to make it to the area chart that we want, I'm just going to take off the stroke. So stroke is pretty much an outline and fill is what's on the inside. So now we have our area chart and I'll just change the color just for fun. And then the background portion I don't like to get rid of just in case I need to edit something later. So what I actually normally do is just come over here and toggle the visibility. That's that eye right here next to it in the layers panel. So if I click that, so now it looks like the eye is closed. It just hid those lines that we had, but I could bring them back if I needed them later. And then the uh, last thing I'll show you is if we did want this to be a line chart, I'm just going to duplicate this. Turn off the fill, turn on the stroke, make it a little bit 
thicker as so you can see that so I'm editing that here and this is looking at the width of the line so I'm changing it from one to three so you see it got a little bit thicker um, I'm going to double click and I'm going to select some of these bottom points delete delete done and then there we have a line chart the last chart we're going to create here today is a scatter plot this one is both the easiest and the hardest uh, and I will tell you why as we go so again in the shape tools we're going to start off with a line just so we can build those axes so again press shift to make a straight line and there's one go back to our line tool press shift to make other axes and then we'll just move it over so they connect uh, I think they're a little thin so drag and select them both and change that line width like we talked about earlier uh, I find that three in general is a pretty good width so we're going to use that back up to our shapes tool we're going to select an ellipse so we can make a circle I'm just going to single click uh, and this is the default again 100 by 100 I think that's a little big for what we're looking for for this chart so I'm going to edit that over here um, I'm first going to click this little link to constrain proportions basically that's going to ensure that it's always going to be a circle so equal width and equal height since that's what we started with I think maybe 35 uh, maybe go a little bigger 40 uh, seems like a good one for this and then my favorite shortcut again command D we're just gonna press that a lot of times so look over here on the left hand side and you sort of see what that does because it's not going to make a difference here immediately but as I press it you're seeing it create more and more but it is creating them on top of each other uh, right now until we move them and after that just move them wherever this is actually what I think is the hard part about making a scatter plot is making it look random and not equally spaced which is I think really hard to do on purpose so I try not to think too much about it and just move them and drop them and then if I wanted to change the color just drag and select go over to fill and pick the color that I like um, another thing to note specifically about scatter plots is you may uh, have some points overlapping that's not entirely uncommon if you're actually making a scatter plot uh, and so if you want to you can uh, decrease the opacity here so that overlap is a little bit easier to see that's one option uh, another is to just add maybe in this case a white outline onto these um, just to make it easier to see that there are some overlapping ones so a couple formatting options for that but here is how to make a scatter plot So I hope you enjoyed this video learning how to make a few common chart types in Figma and I hope you join me for the next video where I talk about how to bring those together in a dashboard like you're seeing here.